Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I've been riding all day out in the Colorado countryside getting prepared for the upcoming bicycle touring season. In this video, I thought we would talk about what is a bicycle tour and more importantly, why you might want to tour on a folding bicycle. It makes you miss the peaceful solitude of the Colorado countryside, doesn't it? You get back into the city and it's noise, 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 irritating people, noise, noise, noise. 
Okay guys, we're gonna be doing a series of videos on bicycle touring. In this video, we're gonna be talking about what is a bicycle tour and why you might wanna tour on a folding bicycle. In the next video that I'm making right now, we're gonna talk about the characteristics of a good touring bicycle and more specifically, the characteristics of a good touring folding bicycle. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's first talk about bicycle touring. What is a bicycle tour? So what do I think a bicycle tour is? Well, let's talk about traveling, okay? If you're traveling anywhere, whether it's by plane, train, car, bus, whatever, a lot of times people just wanna to travel to get to the destination, and the destination is the most important thing. If you're flying on an airplane, you do not care about the journey at all. You get onto the airplane, you put your earbuds in, you zone out until it's time to land. All you care about is the destination. Now, when you're riding in a car, it could be the same thing. You got an eight hour drive, you're bored to death, you turn on some tunes and you kind of zone out and you drive. You don't care about the journey, you just care about the destination. That's traveling. Traveling by bicycle would include going to work or going to the grocery store. You're going to a destination. You don't care about seeing things along the way. You don't care about the journey. You just care about getting to where you're wanting to go. So when you're going on a bicycle tour, the journey is just as important as the destination. It's like that old adage, getting there is half the fun. So you kind of tailor your trip. You tailor your route around specific areas that you want to see along the way. That is basically what bicycle touring is. That's what touring in a car is. That's what touring on a you know, bus is. If you're traveling by car here in America on the interstate road system, the interstates are designed in such a way that you can get from point A to point B in the shortest distance possible. They usually don't have a lot of tourist hotspots along interstate highway systems. Uh, usually you have to get off the beaten trail a little bit off the interstate and down the road a little ways in order to find any kind of tourist type places. So bicycle touring, much like touring in a car, it's fun, it's enjoyable, and you wanna see sights along the way. You wanna take your time, you wanna go off the beaten path a little bit. That is the fun. The journey is part of the fun, if not half of the fun. The destination is fun, but the journey is fun as well. And that's the essence of bicycle touring or touring by car or any type of touring that you're gonna do. Now bicycle touring can be subdivided into two categories, guided tours and self-guided tours. And both of them have their pluses and minuses. Guided bicycle tours are very, very popular amongst newbie cyclists because you don't have to really worry about any of the logistics and safety aspects. The organization that's putting on the bicycle tour, they deal with all of that. They take a group of people on a predefined route, hitting all the scenic hotspots that people wanna look at. They generally go at a very moderate, if very slow pace, you know, so they can be inclusive to the most amount of riders. They have people on site that can take care of injuries and bicycle maintenance problems, and they can watch out for hazards in the road. Generally, on a guided bicycle tour, you don't really have to think about anything. You just are there to enjoy the ride. Everything is taken care of for you. That's why a lot of newbie cyclists love guided bicycle tours. They do have their downsides as well. Generally, one of the biggest downsides is it costs money. You know, you have to pay sometimes a considerable amount of money depending on how long the tour is. Most of your guided bicycle tours are gonna be about half a day or a day long, sometimes two days. It's almost non-existent to get anything longer than a week. Another downside to guided bicycle tours is you don't get to go at your own pace and you don't get to see what you wanna see. You get to see what they want you to see. Like I said, they have a predefined route and they have predefined stops along the way. Usually the best places, they usually know the best places, so you're gonna stop at a lot of cool scenic spots but sometimes our interests differ sometimes you're going to stop at a place and you're going to be like okay this is cool i'm ready to get back on the bike you can't do that if they say they're going to stop for about 30 minutes and give everybody a break you're not even tired you can continue on uh, you have to stop for that 30 minutes anyway so you don't get to go at your own pace if you want to change direction if you say hey that road looks really cool or there's a off-road section i would like to do you can't just change plans. Everything has to go by schedule, by plan, and you cannot make deviations to that plan. And that's why a lot of people, like myself, a lot of more seasoned cyclists, we like self-guided tours because there's no limit to self-guided tours whatsoever. You can do what you want, go where you want, at your own pace, on your own time. So whatever you wanna do, you can do it. If you wanna make a, a deviation to your plan and say, hey, I wanna go down this dirt road for 10 miles, you can do that. If you stop at a cool site, 
and you want to look around for about five minutes and say okay that's enough for me I'm on the road again you don't have to wait around for a group you don't have to wait around for slower riders you don't have to deal with any of that stuff but there are downsides to self-guided tours obviously you're on your own in case you get hurt or if there's hazards in the road you definitely have to pay more attention you don't have that social aspect and being able to talk to a group of people that you normally would never talk to you have to worry about the logistics a little bit you have to have some sort of idea of what you're doing where you're going even if you do change your plans you have to kind of change your plans on the fly which means you have to figure everything out on the fly. There are a lot of downsides to self-guided tours, but there is no time limit to self-guided tours, and there definitely is no distance limit. You can go as far as you want for as long as you want. As long as you got the funds, you can go where you want to go. So now let's talk about why you might want to tour on a folding bicycle. I used to tour on full-size bicycles. And I'm telling you right now, after I got rid of all my full-size bicycles, after I got my first folding bicycle, I have never looked back. The convenience of a folding bicycle is second to none. So let's talk about a few of the advantages of having a folding bicycle. Any of you guys that have ever traveled with a full-size touring bicycle know what a massive pain in the butt it is. First off, you gotta completely take apart your bicycle and you gotta pack it in a bicycle box or if you have one of those special bicycle carriers, you can use that. But either way, those bicycle boxes or the bicycle carriers, they're humongous, they're big. They take up a lot of room. Once you get your bicycle completely disassembled and packed away, you gotta find a ride to the airport. One of the problems that I had was finding somebody can take me to the airport that can fit that big old box in their car or their SUV. A lot of your medium sized to small SUVs and cars, they can't fit a box that big or a bicycle carrier that big. So what do you do? You gotta get somebody with a full size SUV or somebody with a truck to be able to haul your bicycle box or your bicycle carrier to the airport. Once you get to the airport, you gotta lug that big thing all around the airport. And then you gotta check it with your luggage. Since it is oversized, they are gonna charge you. Every airline is different. Some will charge you $100, some will charge you $200. But regardless, you're going to be paying an extra fee to haul your bicycle to your destination. Once you get to the destination, you gotta haul that big old bicycle box around the next airport. You gotta find an Uber that's big enough to haul your bicycle box to the hotel. Then once you get to the hotel, you gotta take your bicycle out of the box, unpack it, and then you gotta put your bicycle back together and then readjust it. This process takes hours. It is a pain in the butt. With a folding bike, it is so much easier to travel with. If you're one of those people like me that have cases that turn into bicycle trailers, it's even easier. I have two bicycle cases that turn into trailers. I got a hard case and I got a soft case. And both of them turn into bicycle trailers. So basically when I want to travel somewhere, I fold my bicycle up, I put it in the case, and I check it with my regular baggage. The cool thing is, is my bicycle cases are airline regulation. You're not going to get an oversized baggage charge. So once you get to your destination, you open the case up, you take the bicycle out, you unfold your bicycle, you put all your other luggage into the case, you turn it into trailer mode, you hook it to your bicycle, and you can leave right from the airport if you want to. You don't even have to get an Uber to the hotel. Likewise, if you want to save money on Ubers altogether, you don't even have to get a ride to the airport when you start your journey. You just load all your luggage into your bicycle trailer, you ride up to the airport, when you get to the airport, you take your luggage out of the case, you put your bicycle in the case, and you check it with your regular baggage. It is so freaking easy. Traveling with a folding bike is pure bliss. It eliminates all the aggravation that comes along with trying to transport a full-size touring bicycle. So travel is one thing. What are some of the other benefits to touring on a folding bicycle? I was on a tour on a full-size bicycle many years ago, and I ran over a stick in the road. I didn't see it, I wasn't paying attention. I hit a stick and it got jammed up in my spokes and it broke three or four spokes. My wheel was wobbling like this. I had to get my wheel repaired. I could not ride it the way it was. I walked alongside that road for hours. Three people stopped and asked if I needed any help. All three of these people had small cars. They couldn't do anything to help me. I had to wait for somebody with a full-size truck to ask me if I needed any help. And I said, yeah, I could really use a ride to the next town. He says, throw your bike in the back. I threw my full-size touring bike in the back of his truck. 
He took me to the nearest town. I got a hotel. I went to the bicycle shop the next day and I had them repair my wheel. Now, if I was touring on a folding bicycle and I had the same problem happen, those three cars that pulled over to ask if I needed any help previous to that truck, I could have took a ride with any of those people. When they asked me if I needed any help, I would say, hey, I need a ride to the next town. They would say, where are you gonna put your bicycle? Oh, that's not a problem. I take the luggage off, I stick it in the trunk of their car. I fold my bicycle up, I stick it in the trunk of their car, and I can get a ride to the nearest town and get a hotel and get my bike fixed the next day. It's so much more convenient. I would have saved hours on my last bicycle tour if I had a folding bicycle. The older I get, the uglier I get. So a lot of people nowadays probably wouldn't even pull over. They're like, oh, I don't like the looks of that guy. He kind of looks a little shady. So maybe nobody wants to pull over at all. And guess what? I have to walk to the nearest town. Or if I had a folding bike, I could call an Uber. So I'd take my luggage, put it in the trunk of the Uber. I would fold my bicycle up, put it in the trunk of the Uber and get an Uber ride to the nearest town, get a hotel, and then get my bike fixed the next day. I don't even have to worry about anybody picking me up. Ubers have to pick you up. So when things happen on a bicycle tour, it's a massive convenience and a massive time saver having a folding bicycle. Another benefit to having a folding bicycle on a tour is when you stop to get something to eat at a restaurant. I don't know how many times when I was touring on a full-size touring bike, I would stop at a restaurant and I would have to lock my bike up outside. And you couldn't bring a full-size touring bike inside a restaurant, so I would have to bring a heavy U-lock, lock my bicycle up and then try to take the cases off and take them inside the restaurant. And still your bicycle is left exposed. I had quick disconnects on my wheels because I like being able to take the wheels off really easy and change the tires. So it was kind of a pain in the ass because I also had to carry a cable around to kind of root through my wheels so that nobody would steal my wheels off my bicycle. It was such a pain in the butt. With a folding bike, it would have been so much easier. I could have just took the cases off the bicycle, I could have folded up the bike, and I could have brought everything into the restaurant with me and I wouldn't have had to worry about about anything getting stolen off my bicycle or I wouldn't have had to worry about the bicycle itself getting stolen. Another cool thing about a folding bicycle is that a lot of gas station convenience store owners will allow you to bring your bicycle in and lean it up against the wall because it's so small, people aren't gonna be tripping over it. With a full-size bicycle, it takes up a lot of room, so they're like, no, you cannot bring that bicycle in here. With folding bicycles being that they're so small, a lot of people don't care. Another benefit to having a folding bike is when you're actually camping. A lot of times when people are camping on a bicycle tour, they have to leave their bicycle outside the tent. A U-lock isn't going to work in every situation. Sometimes you're out in the woods and you haven't got a choice. You have to chain your bicycle up to a tree, which means you have to carry a big chain with you. You don't have room to put a full-size bicycle in a tent. But with a folding bike, you can fold it up and you can put the bicycle inside the tent with you if you have a two-man tent. But even if you have a one-man tent, a lot of one-man tents have a vestibule, a zip-up vestibule. You could open that vestibule up, put your folding bicycle in there, and then zip the vestibule up. Then you could take your cases off and put them in the tent with you. That way everything is inside the tent with you and you don't have to worry about leaving your bicycle outside the tent exposed. Not only exposed to theft or damage, but also exposed to the weather. Your folding bike can stay all nice and safe inside the tent with you and you don't have to worry about it. Lastly, a folding bike opens up so many possibilities. If you decide you don't want to bike anymore and you want to get public transportation, a train, a bus, a plane, whatever. It's just so convenient to be able to fold your bicycle up and take it on any kind of transportation with you. So you have so many options for multimodal transportation. So there are so many benefits to touring on a folding bicycle. Anyway guys, those are some of the reasons why I like touring on folding bicycles. Guys, if you have any comments or questions, leave it down in the comment and questions section. Slap a like on the video if you like it and I will talk with you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching guys, bye bye.